Hi, I'd like to tell you a little bit about dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. Dynamic blocks are powerful tools that can be used to increase productivity and decrease your general workflow time. In this video, I'm just going to get it right into it by showing you a basic example of some bathroom fixtures. We're going to have them aligned to a wall and see some different uh, functionalities of dynamic blocks. So let me just first start out by drawing a toilet. I'll use the rectangle command to draw the tank. I'm just going to do this real simple. An ellipse for the bowl. And just a couple of lines. So now that we have our toilet, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to start a block definition using this toilet. I'll pick my base point uh, just at the top of the tank, because that's where I'm going to want it to align to the wall. I'll give this block a name of fixtures, and I'll make sure that open in block editor is checked in this bottom left corner of the block definition window. Say OK. And that'll take us into the block editor and you can see we've got a ribbon and we've got this tool palette on our left side the block authoring palette which is important for this dynamic block we're going to create if you don't see the authoring palette you can just toggle it on and off with this button on your contextual ribbon next I'll go ahead and draw a sink next to my toilet again this is all real basic so just a rectangle and an ellipse I'm going to center that ellipse in the rectangle Sink's looking a little small, so let me scale that up. Next, I'll actually just take this whole sink I just created and I'm going to move it so that it shares the same base point as my toilet. Now, most dynamic definitions consist of both parameters and actions, which you'll see on the left for your block authoring palette. Uh, the first one we're going to do today is a uh, a visibility dynamic parameter and this one's actually not going to be associated with an action so to do that I'll just click on visibility on my palette it'll ask me to place it down I'll put it just below my objects I think the best way to see what this actually does is to just do it so if you want to follow along what we'll do is uh, we'll create some new visibility states so we'll use this visibility states button up on our ribbon Click on that, and it'll bring us into the Visibility State Manager. And here I just want to be sure that I have two visibility states, one for my toilet and one for my sink. So I'll say New. Call this one Toilet. And another visibility state, which I'll rename uh, to be called Sink. And then I'll say OK. And you'll see on the visibility panel in my ribbon that I am right now in the Toilet visibility state. So what I can do here is I can then choose my sink, since it shouldn't display here, and I can just use this button that says Make Invisible. I'll then switch to sink for my visibility state, and this time I'll choose my toilet, and I'll say Make Invisible. Now I'm going to show you how you can actually dynamically resize objects in these dynamic blocks. So I'll add a couple linear parameters to my sink. They work just like dimensions in AutoCAD. The only other thing I'll do is I want to delete some of the grips on these linear parameters. So if I select just the triangle on the left here, I can delete that. And I'll do the same with this top triangle. So now I only have two grips. Once I have my parameters, I want to add some actions to these parameters. So I'll go to the Actions tab on my block authoring palette. In this case, I'm going to choose Stretch. 
So I'll click on stretch. It asks me to select a parameter. I'll do the horizontal parameter first. I'll select that. Now it asks for a point to associate. I'll pick this grip right here. And now a crossing window. So if I want to stretch the right side of this sink out, I'll put a crossing window around the block like this. Then I select the objects I want to stretch. I want to stretch this part of my sink. And I also want to stretch this parameter out so that it moves while I stretch. In this case, I want uh, my sink to stretch out equally on both sides of my insertion point. So I'm going to do another stretch. I'm going to use the same point. This time I'm going to put a crossing window on the left side of my box and select the outside of my sink. Now I need to look at the properties for that second stretch so that I can be sure um, that this stretch is going the opposite direction. So I'll open my properties window. I'll select this stretch instance. And I'll just change the distance multiplier to negative one. And that'll make it so that when I pull this grip out, the right side will move to the right, the left side will move to the left. Just go ahead and add another stretch to my vertical parameter. Put my stretch frame like this. Choose the outside of my sink. I also want to move my visibility icon. And then finally, if I want to keep my base and centered, I'm probably going to want to use a move command. So I'll say move for my parameter. I'll use distance 1, use the same point again, and select just the basin of my sink to move. So now the sink should be completely resizable on the fly when it's in our drawing. And the last thing I want to do is I want to make this whole block align with a wall um, tangentially. So to do that, let me go back to parameters. I'll use this alignment parameter. For my base point, I'll choose my insertion point. Now I want to check the type. You can see in my command line it's asking me if I want to specify the direction or choose the type. So if I type T, I'll see right now it's set to perpendicular, but I want a tangent alignment, so I'll say T. For my direction, I'll just use a, a parallel snap. And that should complete the definition of our block. So let's get out of the block editor. I'll just click close block editor, save the changes. So let me draw some walls to represent sorry, draw some lines to represent walls so that we can see how this align works. And I'll even use a spline so that you can see how uh, it can really go tangent. Let me insert a couple of instances of this block, fixtures. Say OK. Now you can see as I come up to something, it actually aligns with it. As I move along my spline, my sink is aligning. So now that we've placed it, let's see what those dynamic definitions actually do. If I zoom in a little bit and I click on this block, I'll see a couple of things. One is the visibility state switcher. So this arrow here, if I click on that, I can choose whether I want to see my toilet or my sink. The other thing I have is this grip here on my sink. So if I take this, I can just stretch out my sink. Now you may notice that my basin is not staying centered, and that's because uh, it's actually moving with my grip, if you remember from the definition. So if you just go back into the definition and you change the multiplier for that move action, you can actually get the, the basin to stay centered in the counter. So for the sake of time, I've gone into the block editor and I've done that, and now you can see as I move this out, my basin stays centered. That's what I wanted to show you about dynamic blocks. I hope it helps. Uh, you can do a lot more with dynamic blocks. This is just sort of the basics. Thanks uh, for looking at another video by CAD Masters. Um, please check out some of our other videos for your learning.